really beautiful. I think that's the one thing that I love most about Toronto is the fact that there are so many artists here, so many different creatives. And the city usually just gives them like a place to go. Um, Graffiti Alley, I've never been there, but I've heard lots about it. But Graffiti Alley is like the one place where lots of artists collaborate together. If there's like a certain theme for a season or certain initiatives or activism or whatever, then that's usually where they go. So it's, it's actually really cool. So I just thought I'd want to show you this on the way to the distillery district. Because that's where we're going today. I love these eels, oh my god, they're amazing. Oof. And I remember saying like years and years and years ago that like, I would have loved to have worked with some graffiti artists and mural artists and had them like paint the inside of my ideal house, like various rooms and stuff. And all this is doing is just kind of reminding me that that's still a goal that I could potentially have happen in the future, so who knows? I just don't, I don't personally have this skill or this talent, but I do love art. I love doing my own drawings and stuff, but this is breathtaking. It's basically the same as all of like the Barclays bikes in London. So I haven't been on a bike in about a year, so wish me luck. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see if it's the right height. It's the perfect height. Alright. Bye! Okay. That was tiring. <laughs> but I made it. It wasn't that bad. I'm not exactly panting or anything. It wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty a pretty good ride. Um, so we're going to be heading into the distillery district now. From what I understand, it is literally just one small section of road. Um, there's like a theme to do with love down there. So I'll be snapping pictures here and there. But for the most part, I guess I'm just going to show you what's down there. only place but as far as I'm aware it's the only place where they actually make sake here in Canada and it's actually located here in Ontario so at some point we'll come back and then we can try it proper homegrown sake
Yeah. I've got a new Kindle. Oh. I've been meaning to get one for ages because I've got one, but it's back in the UK, but it was the Kindle 3 from like 10 years ago. Um, and it was fine up until a few years ago. And then I just kind of switched over to using the app. Um, but reading on a mobile phone or an iPad just doesn't do well with my eyes. So I thought, let's dive back in and get a new Kindle. But the only reason why I remembered was because my sister-in-law messaged the other day. She's in the middle of deciding whether she wants a Kindle or a Kobo. If any of you happen to have either one or have used either one of those, please put it in the comment section below because it could be really helpful and I could just sort of give her um, a bit more information. But I already have like a really deep Amazon account with Kindle, audiobooks, um, my author account on Goodreads, you name it. It's all owned by Amazon. <laughs> I just need to figure out a way now to get my Comixology account over or if I need to get a new Comixology account. I don't know. I'll have to just see. But yeah, I'm so happy. Time to set it up. This is the home screen. Previously, there was like a little reminder or I guess a navigation for people who were quite new or revisiting or refreshing their use of a Kindle, um, where it's just telling me about the buttons at the very top and how to move and maneuver around the screen. It is quite different from the Kindle 3, I must say, um, especially with the size of it, which is really handy. I can put it in the smallest bag that I own, which is handy. Um, but also because I've set up a new Kindle account and I had to set up a new Amazon account like over a year ago when I first moved to Canada. So this is actually going to be the first book that I'm going to read on here. Um, it was a book that was over on um, the Instagram of a good friend of mine um, and he and I do like to sit and talk and discuss politics quite often. Um, we do seem to share a lot in common when it comes to politics and I won't be talking about that stuff on my channel um, but it was a book that he had and it's something that I thought I could um, give a good read to and continue to expand my mind I guess you could say so yeah I'm going to be diving into that book first and I'm quite excited but as with my previous Kindle all of the books I have on that old account I will be keeping on my phone one of my phones anyway um, and my iPad so that way I'll continue to have access to all of that um, wealth and collection of books there um, and then this one is completely a new slate so I'm looking forward to reading a lot of books that other people will not be able to see. <laughs> so I think I'm going to start going down the romance route now. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll just sort of see as time goes on. But yeah, I hope that little unboxing was kind of okay. It wasn't great, but I just thought it's, it's fairly quick and it had a little bit of music. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you for watching that little i don't know what the hell that was <laughs> like a vlog type thing um I've, I've been gone for a while i've been gone for a while and there is a big reason for that and it's something that i was trying to avoid discussing with people or discussing in general um and it's also part of the reason why i haven't really sat down and discussed my first published book 
with anybody, which was my collection of essays on mental health and the occult. And it's mostly because of society's view of mental health and whatnot. So I've always grown up with the notion that people don't really want to talk about it. But since most writers and most creatives in general tend to be affected by the same things that most people with mental health issues deal with anyway, it just seemed like a really fitting space to be able to make friends and, you know, just tell them every so often, like, you know, if I disappear from social media, like I have done recently, it's because I'm dealing with a lot of things right now and I just need a bit of space. And that's just kind of how I cope with things. I disappear and then work on things in private and then slowly start bringing myself back to the world of social media once I start feeling more alive again. <sighs> I've tried to film this so many times and I just, it just gets real difficult. Right, so I'm gonna try now. I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and persistent depressive disorder or known as high functioning depression um, back when I was a young teenager. I've had anxiety since I was tiny for as long as I can remember I've always had anxiety um my old family doctor was very aware of that and he was like giving my family tips and things that they could use to sort of help me um develop and practice good coping mechanisms it wasn't until I was about 13 going on 14 before something huge and traumatic really changed my life that my psychotherapist at the time was really into the notion of trying to find natural remedies I guess for people to use for themselves um, and by remedies I mean things that you naturally do because you enjoy them so things that sort of align with the idea of hobbies and things so if you're a painter maybe you should paint to relax more um, and then bring your paintings in so we can sit and analyze them that kind of thing so my psychotherapist at the time was somebody who um, knew that I was really into journaling and was he knew I was also really into making up stories and doing a lot of theater and music and all that kind of stuff and he was like well why don't you keep a journal and journal down your everyday feelings and thoughts and experiences and then we can go over them in our sessions together um, and then maybe consider start writing stories and things and seeing what happens. So the journaling was something that I did for about three years. When I was about 16 going on 17, I then started working on what I would consider to be like my first novel draft idea, um, which is a really terrible story, but I recently found it. So I'm kind of tempted to kind of rehash it at some point in the future and make it better because boy, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Um, but writing has been a very solid thing for me and, and writing is also, other than being a productive and a creative thing, it's also very an emotional um, practice for me. It's just a good way that I cope with things. And if I'm not writing, then nine times out of 10, I'm reading. So when I disappear, I've disappeared off social media, I've disappeared off the public platforms, but I'm remaining as private as possible because it's just how I cope. I like to just disappear from things and people. Um, the upside of growing up with very little friends is knowing that you don't really have anyone to distract you. So when you do disappear, it's very rare that people notice. Um, it sucks sometimes because it's like, well, damn, that just sort of maximizes my loneliness. But at the same time, it's like, well, it means I have more time to focus on other things. So hopefully that makes sense. I have PDD and I have GAD and I just deal with it in my own way and sometimes I just disappear. But with that being said, I have been uploading to my main channel. I haven't uploaded anything, I think in the last two weeks, I think or last week or the last two weeks, but there was about a month ago, I was super creative and I was recording all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I just made it a habit to record a bunch of random bits of information for that main channel. And then I would record, sorry, I would then edit videos and then download them and upload them and all that kind of stuff. And then just sort of release them as each week went by. So that form of scheduling actually made a lot more sense to me. So I'm planning on trying to um, make that more of a permanent habit, I guess you could say. And then I can do that for this channel so that whenever there are weeks where I'm dealing with anxiety and I'm feeling really overwhelmed and I just need time to myself, then most of you guys won't necessarily know about it because I've already pre-recorded like one or two videos and I can just have those uploaded. That way I can sort of keep with a bit more consistency. So whilst I'm trying to sort of 
keep my head above water and try and stay um, grounded at the same time. I don't know how you stay grounded when you're in water, but I guess there's not a lot of water. Um, I'm dealing with a lot of things in my private life as well. The main thing being that my mum was rushed into hospital a couple of weeks ago when a suspected stroke. Um, obviously I'm here in Canada. I can't fly out there and be with her or see her or anything like that. The pandemic is also going on, so no one's able to go visit her or anything. And this is a woman who is terrified of hospitals, but she's absolutely terrified. And every time I've spoken to her on the phone, after I've put the phone down, having spent the last few minutes listening to her just being really confused and not sure what to say or how to say things anymore and then hearing her voice just shaking it's been really difficult so understandably it's just been really rough of late there's the anxiety of just being back at work which has just been stressing me out of late um there's just a lot of stuff going on and it's just been it's been like I said it's just been really rough and my husband has been the absolute best he's been a huge support he's been my rock um throughout all of it and I do make a habit of letting him know almost every other day at least every other day that I'm so happy that he's in my life and that he's been helping me out as much as he has um and to be honest he's a guy so helping me out and like helping me fix things is kind of natural to him so it's it's kind of fun to see him in his element knowing that if I suddenly find that I can't do something or I'm overwhelmed with something his immediate response is to make me tea come over hold my hand rock me back and forth and be like it's gonna be fine it's gonna be good we're gonna be we're gonna get through this it's cool you're not doing this by yourself <laughs> so it's been it's been really it's been a a bit of a an emotional time it's been kind of crazy it's been depressing it's also been just kind of overwhelming it's been weird but it's also been really um happy too with him he's just been amazing but on the creative aspect um share the mic now writer's edition is coming up in the next few weeks so i'm looking forward to doing that that's something that's a goal that i'm actually looking forward to doing um so in case you haven't seen anything about it start checking out the hashtag over on instagram share the mic now writer's edition um and then i think i had a i don't know what you call it an igtv story um it should be up on my instagram still so in case you want to check that out to get an idea of what's going on there um by all means you can do that um i'm trying to get myself back into that creative flow again because even when i do get really 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 depressed like really down in the dumps um I don't stop being creative because like I said, it's it's a coping mechanism for me. So I don't stop being creative. That will always continue. Um, but I just don't really socialize it or publicize it on social media or anything. I just continue with things, but just slowly in the background. I'm also working on a very long to-do list that I was working on since May. And I'm finally getting to a point where I'm finally starting to close up on everything. Um, getting reviews finalized edited and finished and then eventually I'll get those all uploaded and scheduled to be released every week and then things should be getting back on top of thing uh, on top of thing what you know what I mean so things are looking up I'm feeling a lot better um but like I said we're not out of the woods yet for a number of different things things that are going on in our private lives as well as in the public aspect aspect or public sphere um and I've got another couple of poems that I've been doing a lot of research for and have been writing for um, that I'm working on that I would like to get recorded and uploaded at some point over the coming weeks. So with those positive goals in mind, I'm trying to just focus on those and just trying to stay as positive as I can where I can. But obviously I'm taking things slow. I'm not going to pressure myself too much. Um... There's a lot going on. I'm busy, which is the main thing. And I have, like I said, I've got a new Kindle, so I'm busy reading as well and trying to get back into doing that a lot of more, a little bit more. Um, because I've put down physical books for a little while. It's just easier during the pandemic and when I'm having to commute um to and from work to just have a Kindle instead of holding like a physical book in my hand. Um, it's just easier for me because it means I can carry several books at the same time. Um but yeah, now I'm just rambling, which is what I'm pretty good at. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna let you guys go. But thank you for watching this vlog. Um, I hope you don't mind.
but I won't be back for a little while yet, but at some point I will be. But I am watching your videos, I just haven't been commenting or anything. Um, maybe I should do that. That should be another goal. Just work on the social anxiety. Just, Ugh, I don't know. I'm busy guys and I'm feeling better. So that's all you need to know. <laughs>